Hi again everyone. Quick question. What can we say about the number of four? Yes, four. Is it a natural number? Does it belong to integers? Is it a real number? Yes. If you're a bit confused right now and you really don't know the answer to these, then this video is for you. We're going to explain the different types of numbers natural numbers, the integers, the rational numbers, the irrational numbers, and the set of real numbers. We're going to take it very simple and simplified. We'll use a story to help us. By the way, my name is Rajesh Lakhan. Let's get into it. We start with a set of natural numbers. Please, let's assume that there arose because there was a need to count. So we needed to count things. So the natural numbers goes from 0, 1, 2, 3. And these dots means that they continue without end. It goes until infinity. Well, it never stops. Now I'm going to introduce the story to help us along the way now. So let me take you back about 2000 years or so. And there's this guy called Stoney. And he has a lot of mathematical dilemmas. So he works in a quarry and he goes to work and he comes back home. So let's go into the story. So Stoney goes to work one day and he gets paid five stones. Yes, stones. He works for stones. Now he realizes when he reaches home that he has in total 11 stones in his pocket. 11 stones. He wants to find out how, my, how many stones he initially had. So let's form this. Let's form a mathematical equation to help him solve this. So he gets paid five stones. He initially had X in his pocket. And at the end of the day, he has 11 stones. So you might think this is very easy to solve. We just subtract five from both sides. And we get X is equal to six. That's correct. And that's excellent. Very good. But hidden here is the number negative 5. But we do not have any negative numbers. All we have are the natural numbers, which are all positive numbers. Therefore, mathematicians invented negative numbers. So we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on and so forth. Now, we grouped together the negative numbers with the positive numbers and we call this set the set of integers and it's denoted by this fancy c. Let's call it fancy c for you all. Now one big point I want to mention here is that the numbers in the set of integers 0, 1, 2, 3 are not the same 0, 1, 2, and 3 that are in the set of natural numbers. Now, this might sound a bit weird. You can see 1, you can see 1, you can see 2, and 3. It's the exact same thing. No, it's mathematically incorrect to say that the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of integers. This is a bit advanced, but what happens is that there is a subset of the set of integers that behaves like a set of natural numbers. In higher mathematics, this is called an isomorphism. But th this is for another day. We won't go into this. So let's move on. Next day, Stoney goes to work. He works for X stones as usual. And at the end of the day, he realizes that he has 12 stones. What happened? He forgot to empty his pocket from yesterday. So he worked for X stones as well yesterday. So he wants to find out how many does, did he work for each day. So we have he initially worked for X stones today. He worked for X stones tomorrow. Sorry, yesterday. And his total is 12. So we have 2X equals to 12. And again, this is very easy to solve. We just multiply by a half. However, 
a half. Where did a half come from? All we have are the sets of integers, which are negative numbers and positive numbers. So we need to invent a half. Things are getting interesting now. So we invent fractions. We have a half, we have minus a half, start negative a half, we have four fifths, we have negative seven on two. Now we came up with a very neat way to write fractions. So the set of rational numbers is denoted by this fancy symbol here, fancy q, and it's equal to the set curly bracket of all numbers that can be put into the form t divided by q, where both t and q are elements of z. So in other words, t and q could be any one of these numbers here, except there's a, there's a rule that q must not be equal to zero. Why is that? Give you a second or so to think about it. Yes, that's correct. If q is equal to zero, then we have division by zero, which is undefined in mathematics. That's why we have the restriction. Now again, let's make this analysis. When p is, let's just say, 5 and q is 1, we have this breaks down to 5. If p is negative 17 and q is 1 again, this is negative 17. So we see that when q is 1, our rational numbers turn into integers. Again, we can't say that the set of integers is a subset of the set of rational numbers. But more correctly is that they behave like the rational numbers. Good. So we continue with our story. The story wants to rear some cattle. So he comes and he realizes he has five meters, five square meters of land. He wants to know how long the length of his fence should be because he's going to box in the cattle in a square. So let x be the length of each side of, of the square. Then the area is equal to x squared, which must be equal to 5. So we take the square root on both sides, and we get x is the square root of 5. But where does this number fall? We don't have any square roots of 5. So again, the irrational numbers were created. So it's very difficult at this level to represent neatly what irrational numbers are. So I just have examples here. So we have negative root 2, negative root 3, we have the exponential, we have minus 5, we have sums and differences, we have minus 5, minus e, we have 2, we have root 2, root 3, and so on. Now what's interesting is we added, or we did the union of both the rational numbers and the irrational numbers to get the real numbers. So this next diagram should simplify things a lot. So let's consider all the numbers from negative 3 to positive 3. So if we're dealing with the natural numbers, this would have 0, 1, 2, and 3. If we're dealing with the integers, then we'd have those integers that act like the natural numbers, 0, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then we have integers that are not natural numbers, which are negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. If we go up to the rational numbers now, we have all the numbers before, but now we have fractions. So we have 2.5, we have 1.5, we have a half, we have negative a half, negative 2 and a half, negative, sorry, negative 1 and a half, negative 2 and a half. And of course, we'll have all the numbers between here as well. So this is zero and this is a half, so we're going to have a quarter here. But it's too many to include, so once you understand what's going on, you can move on. Now there are numbers like the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 and e, which are not rational numbers. So we call these irrational numbers. And then we join the irrational numbers with the rational numbers 
take the set of real numbers and the set of real numbers has all the numbers that you can think about thus far hope this clears up things a lot so a quick summary we started with a set of natural numbers then we extended it to include the set of negative numbers then we extend it again to include a set of fractions we extend it one more time to include sorry we didn't extend we have the set of irrational numbers which have square roots the e's the pi's and then we group these two to get a set of real numbers nice so just have one practical example so assume that your neighbor is baking a cake and she's short of two two pot spoons of sugar so she comes and she asks you and you decide that you only have a very little bit of sugar left in your bag so you're going to give her the bag of sugar so you have a one bag of sugar so one can be considered as a natural number an integer or a rational number and since the rationals make up the real also real number then let's just say that this bag of sugar weighed 1.2 pounds 1.2 is a rational number because it's a fraction so it is not an integer or it's not a natural number so you have followed each of how these numbers are unique okay so i have a mini assignment for you all please we have in groups of two and the first person has to identify four household items and the second individual has to state which types of numbers can be used in each case just as i did with my bag of sugar example so that i'd like to say i hope you enjoyed the video please feel free to leave your comment below let us know if there are any things you'd like to see us clear up in our next videos so thank you very much i hope you enjoy the rest of the day this was rajesh bye